Hi everyone, welcome to the Learning Lab series of C Programming. I am Varun and today we would like to understand the implementation of scanf function which is augmented with the discussion on printf function syntax more elaboratively which would help you to solve the challenge effortlessly which is given at the end of the video. As in the last session, we would like to analyze the output of single scanf function available in main function. The very initial thing which is being analyzed is the blinking of underscore. Now, can we say that it is waiting for some input as the compiler encountered scanf statement while execution? Yes, it is true. When you enter your input and press enter, the program will end in our this particular exercise. But now the question is, what has to be input? Maybe you know this as a programmer, but what about if someone else would saw this console window? The person may understand console is waiting for some input, but still what to input? Name or any value or anything else. In order to solve this problem, can we put some message for what to input and we also knew that how to write on console window? That is through printf function. Let's amend our program and make it more user friendly. Let's have a look on exercise. Write a C program to take the input for magnitude of turning force from console window. This is the particular script we have written for this particular program. Firstly the documentation section. Then we have preprocessor directives. Then we have variable declaration that is in the global declaration section. We have declared the variable turning force of integer type. Then within the main function, we have initially passed a message in which we are asking the user enter the magnitude of turning force in newtons. Then we can give a scanf statement in which we are using the syntax. Firstly, the type specifier with the percent character percent d within the double quotes then comma then m percent turning force in which variable we want the input to be stored. The output of that particular program is look it is asking for the user to enter the magnitude of turning force. The user would enter 120 and then press enter then the program will end. Now the console window looks more intuitive than before and user can now easily input the ask data. So from this particular exercise we can conclude that with every scanf statement we need an associated instructive printf statement for the purpose of informing the data required in the program to the user. Now consider if you would like to print the data available in the variable then what we need to do? As we are aware about the formatted console output function available in the C is printf. As of now, we only print the message or string on the console output. As the syntax shown is here for printing the message over the console output. But for achieving the asked question, let's discuss the syntax of printf function more elaboratively. The complete syntax of printf function is printf parenthesis start then double quotes, then within the double quotes, you have to write a control string, then double quotes close, then comma, then arguments. Where control string refers to the string that contains formatting information. Basically, it consists of three types of items. First is characters or strings that will be printed on the screen as they appear. Second thing is format specifications that define the output format for display of each item that is for the variable. Now the question is how to write the format specification. The format for writing the format specification is percentage followed by the type specifier. The, as the type specifiers are already discussed in scanf function also but for the reference it is also given over here. For integer the type specifier is t, for float it is f, for character it is C, for string that, that means for a string of characters that is S. Third item is escape sequences such as backslash n, backslash t etc which is already discussed in the previous sessions. 
these three items are all considered under the control string and which is always under the double quotes. The next is the arguments. The arguments, argument 1, 2, up to n are the variables whose values are formatted and printed according to the specifications of control string. The arguments should be match in number, order and type with the format specifications. Let's understand this with an examples. Example number one, suppose in the program some data is stored in the variable named force magnitude with an integer value of 120. Write the printf statement which would print the magnitude of force is 120 means 120 is the variable value and in the second part the magnitude of force is 120 newtons. These statements you would have to print. Now by following the format as discussed in the previous slide the solution for first part is printf parenthesis start within the double quotes it is the message the magnitude of force is columns then you have to give the format specification that is the percentage d. Why d? Because it is an integer sort of value that is why it is the variable which is already declared as integer type. Then the type specifier selected is d for the format specification format. Then double quotes close then comma then you have to give the argument. Argument means you have to give the variable name. So the output of that particular printf statement is the magnitude of force is 120. Now let's write the second solution. The second one is printf parenthesis then within the double quotes initially you have to write the message the magnitude of force is percentage d newtons. You just have to put the format specification where you have got the variable value that means at this place after is and before newtons. Here you have to give the format specification then the format specification for this particular problem is percentage d and then closing the double quotes then comma then after comma you have to give the force magnitude as the variable name. Now let's come on a second example. Suppose in the program some data is stored in the variables named f1, f2 and f3 with the rational values of 12.60, 32.89, 125.6 25.6 So obviously they are of, they are declared with the float type of data type. Now write the printf statements which would print this data as shown beside means we have to write the printf statement so we can get that particular data into the this tabular format. The solution for this particular problem is printf parenthesis start within the double quotes you have to give initially we have to give the f1 as the force then we have given the escape sequences list of tabs then we have give the format specification that is percentage f as it is of float type data type then we have give the backslash and for the new line then double quotes close then comma then variable name that is linked to the this particular format specification then similarly other two are written which collectively would give the tabular format of output let's see one more write the printf statement for the magnitude of f1 f2 and f3 is 12.60 32.89, 125.6 respectively. This we have to print it on the console window by considering the same data as in the example 2. So the printf statement would be like printf parenthesis start within the double quotes. Write the message over here the magnitude of f1, comma f2 and f3 is. Now we have come up with the variable values. Then we have to, what we have to do, we have to give the format specifications that is percentage f, percentage f, percentage f, then respectively. Then you can put the full stop as in the given question. Then double quotes close, then you have to give the arguments in the order in which the format specifications are given. Like 
first percentage f belongs to 12.60 means that is the value of f1 so initially we have to write the f1 then we have to give the f2 then we have to give the f3 i thought the things will be clear now that how to write the variable data on console window in formatted as well as in desired way now let's have a look on some things which needs to be remembered as well as taken care of while writing the program we are considering the same data as we use in the example 2 where we have three rational values or floating values stored in a variables obviously of float data type let's look initially if there is a mismatch of arguments in printf statement with the format specifications this is the one of printf statement from main function is shown here we specify three format specifications within a control string whereas only two arguments are present after control string so at the place of third specifier the garbage value is outputted on the console window secondly if the arguments are unknowingly written in unordered way in printf statement with the format specification this is again the one of the printf statement from main function this statement is obviously going to give an output but if we look on the original data the results are not correct because the arguments are in a unordered way so in this case either change the order of arguments or change the character string or the message which will describe the sensible data thirdly if there is a mismatch of format specification with the variable data type this is again the one of the printf statement from main function the console output of this particular main function is shown over here now from the output we can see that the garbage value at the second format specifier this is due to the invalid type specifier for the declared variable over there in the second format specifier and also in this case the variable f2 is declared with the float data type but the format specification is given as it is declared as the integer data type so these are some things which are needs to be taken care of while writing the c program let's have a look on exercise now pause the video and try to perform this by consolidating all the learning done till now Let's have a look on source code and you can match yours. If you people are following this course, your approach would be similar to the shown script. Starting with the documentation section, then we have a preprocessor directives, then we have a global declaration section. Here in this section, as a beginner, by watching the problem statement, we have made the declarations like this as a value corresponding to f1 is rational number. So the variable is declared as float type whereas value corresponding to f2 and f3 is of integer type so declared as int type look if we have two or more variables are of same data type then we declare them by this particular trend also that is by putting a comma after each variable name and then at the end we have to mark the semicolon this is as per the rule now coming to main function where we do know for taking input from user the associated printf with scanf is written and then we write the inputted data into the tabular format by using printf as this is already discussed in our previous slides we have successfully compiled the program and we have successfully got the desired output now there may be case when you got the inputs like this as shown in the case 2 again run the same source code and put these inputs and have a look at the console output the console output you would getting is like this the very first thing that troubles us is why force 3 variable is not weighted for an input for answering this question look at the variable declarations we have declared the force2 variable and force3 variable as of integer type but what we are entering it from case2 is rational value into the integer type force2 variable so that variable would only store the part before decimal and rest part would be still in the stream 
which would automatically entertain by the upcoming scanf statement. That's why force3 variable inputting is skipped in the program. So it will create problem and give invalid or unwanted results as we have seen from the console output. Now the question is how to solve this problem. The solution to problem is by declaring every variable of float type data type as shown in the script below. And also remember the associated changes need to be made after changing declaration type if doing in the same program. Now input the problem arising case and we get this output of the program. So from this exercise we learned that correct variable declaration plays an essential role in successful program execution. So while declaring variable also keep in mind the nature of the inputs that would receive into that variable like in our case force magnitude may be rational value or integer value. So it's always desired to choose the float type because it can handle the both the cases. Let's have a look on another exercise. The exercise is write a program which would ask the user for entering two material name along with its relative material type and then that data would be presented as the tabular output as shown aside. That means we need the final output in this particular tabular format. Before attempting this program, Till now we have seen how to declare the variable for integers or rational numbers but if we would like to input any word or string then what sort of declaration is required for that variable. Let's have a look. Just recall the syntax of variable declaration which is like data type then space then you have to give the variable name. Here in the data type you have to give the keyword of that desired data type. As we also know, the character data type should be used for storing words or letters. So, let's have an example to learn the declaration. If you are supposed to read only single letter, choosing any variable name, the declaration statement could be care space response is the variable name ending with a semicolon. But if you are supposed to read a complete word or a string of characters, Choosing any variable name, the declaration statement could be care, material name is the variable name, then within the scare brackets, you have to give the number, here I give the 15. Now, you may have question, why in scare brackets 15 is given? This we will understand it later, but for a while, you can say that this variable can allow to store a word of length up to 15 characters only. You can choose any length value as required by your program. The things which needs to be remembered while using this sort of variables in the scanf statement, please don't use space while entering input into the character variable. Example, if you want to input mild steel, input in console, you can choose or you can choose any way. Some of them are given over here like mild steel without giving the space or mild dot steel or mild underscore steel. In these particular inputs, we didn't have given any blank space. Now, coming on exercise, pause the video and give a try to solve this exercise. The written C program is this. Starting with the documentation section, then preprocessor directives. Here are the some declarations in the global declaration section of character data type. I have chosen the names, variable names as first material, second material, mat type 1, mat type 2. So here I have given the alert message in which I am asking the user please don't use the space while entering the inputs. So here are some printf and associated scanf statements. In this scanf statement, the same trend should be followed but the type specifier you are using is S in the format specification format. Here the another way of taking multiple inputs in a single scanf is also shown over here for your future reference. In this you can give an appropriate message to the user that how to give the multiple input in a scanf function. Like it is well instructed over here. So, the scanf statement would be written is like 
within the double quotes percentage as percentage as because we are taking into the two inputs in two variables so first is associated with the mat second material and second is associated with the type of second material so in this way we can complete this program after entering inputs into the console output we get this result which is appropriate and valid but if we run the same program and entering the inputs with space in one of input then the results are also shown that after space the word is allocated to upcoming scanner so be careful while entering the input into these particular declarations as we have mistakenly entered the non space metal which would disrupt the whole output you can see over here now this is our main exercise write a program to draw a material property table for following four materials and values should be entered by the user this is the console output for your reference this exercise is for you people here the snip of the console window is shown over here which will instruct you to write the instructive statements and the challenge which is delivered with this exercise is you have to develop the program that user friendly if the sequence of material entering is changed the program would still give the correct output irrespective of the spacing for a while hence for solving this problem in order to achieve this challenge you have to select an appropriate variable declaration by analyzing each property column thoroughly as if shuffle it doesn't affect the desired console output all the best for your exercise thank you for watching for more videos do subscribe my channel maki insight